people. Welcome to another episode of Atheists Having Cocktails with Christians. I am your host, Simon Carnes, and I'm always, always here with my co co pilot, you know, Sailor Jerry Rum. He's my co pilot. So, anybody works for that company and you want to sponsor the show and send me some free <laughs> shit, I'll send you a case. I'll send you a case, agree. Simon. So, um, again, I'm back for part two with my good friend. Uh, you all know him, singer of Vengeance Rising. Hollywood Sanctuary Pastor, the man, the myth, if it jams, it jams, Roger Martinez. Thank you, my friend, for coming back for another another episode, and let's have some fun. Beautiful, bro. Listen, man, so yeah, again, we intend on making this a multi-part series, everybody, where it's interactive. It's me and Simon, but you and me and Simon. You're going to be able to call me. You're going to be able to, you know, leave your voicemails. Let me know your questions. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Let me know what you plan to be doing so that Simon and I can, you know, address, into, you know, things in your life as well. Again, bro, it's uh, let's start a 10, 20 year friendship, you yeah. know, doing all that good stuff. So, yeah, great to be with you again, Simon. And so, so for part two, um, if I may reiterate to everyone watching again, it's to be interactive. So contact us. Listen, uh, I'd like to, um, you know, go ahead and say, firstly, let's give some freebies. Uh, those of you who have been asking about music, I will be putting together music and sending it to you as a YouTube video link at no charge. Cool. So it's going to be cool, man. It's going to be super cool. And uh, again, this is not my, I'm just, I've been in bed for over half a year from a surgery and I'm dealing with things, but I'm getting healthier and it looks like I'm going to live 20 more years, like successfully or 30. And uh, so that's the good news in any case. So, you know, make sure to uh, touch base, make some phone calls. We got like a thousand views already, but yeah. very few phone calls, very few messages. And uh, so let's get more of those. Secondly, uh, you know, last session, I gave you the link, the free link to Christopher Hitchens book, God is not great, how religion ruins, uh, how religion poisons everything. So those of you who get through that book, I will send you some whiskey and beers, you got to prove your age, and then we <laughs> can talk about it. And I have an extra special gift for those of you who do that. And for today, I want you to enjoy the YouTube video series richard dawkins it's called the god delusion and uh particularly to the point where he discusses how children brought up in various religions are a matter for address because that's one of the main points i want to speak about today let's protect these kids from hating each other from saying if you don't do this or if you're not part of my religion then you know you know you're the dad or whatever it is i will deal with some of that today Definitely. And also, you know, I mean, it's the fact that for kids that, you know, it's the same thing of like Grimm's fairy tales, you know what I mean? They might have some sort of, you know, story or, or you know, arc that gets to a point and whatnot. But, you know, what's the best, best way to indoctrinate anyone? Keep them when they're young. You know what I mean? Huh. Yeah, and let me ask you young. this. You know, now, in, keep them coming the, to church, keep them afraid, keep them within this tight knit, you know, closed minded arena. And therefore, you know, they're not going to stray from it because they're going to be too filled with fear to actually explore and question whatever they've been taught. And, you know, let's let's, you know, keep kids an open mind. You know, the world's too big. There's so much amazing shit out here to, to experience that is not going to just be fear based and damnation based if you do not believe or, you know, participate in certain rituals you know and that is a that is a great point so i mean let me ask you this because in the in the 1980s mm -hmm. when we began recording the vengeance rising albums our fans were primarily teenagers pre-teenagers people in their 20s and simon how old were you when you first got your hands on your first vengeance rising album where i wrote all of the bible studies the first record I bought, and I'll tell you exactly, I know where I got it. Um, the Christian bookstore had one copy. It got sold out. And so my sister worked in Ventura. There uh, was two main buildings. There was Salzer's Records and Salzer's Video. And they were both three stories. And I remember one time we went to rent videos, and I had three bucks, three bucks to rent a video. I was a huge wrestling fan, still am. 
uh, went over to the the I think it was when WrestleMania three came out. It just came out on VHS. It wasn't in stock, so I snuck over to the to the uh, record store and I found Human Sacrifice on cassette for a dollar ninety. On cassette, on cassette. On cassette. That and is so funny. Dude, I, How... snagged, I snagged it. That and I was like, dude, I'm not renting a video. I'm I'm buying this. And so I would have been. This would have been eight. <laughs> so I would have been twelve. And Whoa. before that. <laughs> and before that, you know, we were, I was listening to Striper and White Cry right. and Bride, right. and, you know, Carmen and Petra and all that kind yep. of stuff. But right. I already, you know, <laughs> kind of wanted the harder stuff. So I remember having to like, boom, buy it, get into my sister's car and like hide it so that she didn't know I snuck over. <laughs> the but I will say this: I will give this to my sister, who, uh, as I got older. And my mom was not into the metal. She didn't want, I mean, Christian or not, did not want to hear it. But my sister was cool. She used to have a 68 uh, Volkswagen Bug. And when we'd drive around and my mom was, she'd be like, you can put in your, your metal tapes. And she'd let me listen to it with her. So <laughs> also, my sister was also super cool because she got me into, you know, she listened to The Cure and The Smiths and Joy Division. And like, she'd have her door shut listening and I'd sit by and I'm like, what is this cool music I'm listening to, you know? So my sister was pretty rad about a lot of music stuff, you know, but yeah, That's I, was, so cool. I was, I was 12 when I bought the very first <laughs> Vengeance Rising cassette. And back then I would take it back. It wasn't Vengeance Rising. It was Vengeance. Right. Right. So yeah. now, do you guys spend Thanksgivings together every year now? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All my family lives here in Kansas city with me now. Um, cool. So, I mean, and my wife's family lives is from Kansas city. So they live here. So we kind of split it up between years and whatnot. So that's one cool. Christmas one year, Thanksgiving. So yeah, my, my sister's she's top notch. She's cool. Cool. So listen, uh, since then in the early nineties, when I became an anti-theist commonly known as atheist. Um, and again, I'm the same as president Ronald Reagan's son, Ron Reagan, who's an unabashed atheist and has commercials all over the airwaves supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation, FFRF.com. If you can put that at the bottom of the screen, FFRF.com. It's one of the organizations. For instance, I'm also a member, I've been for decades for American Atheists. Their website Mm -hmm. is atheist.org. And uh, again, so yeah, if you put those uh, at the bottom of the page, I can do before, that'll be great. And then... So from my years of experience, when I hear the term God, it simply is an acronym that stands for Games of Deception, G-O-D, Games of Deception. And I think that the people hurt worst by deception are children. So to instill that, I will expound on in this series, it's sordid. So Yeah, and that's the thing, if you know... That's kind of what my what I kind of hope for this is that not only you know we start a debate an open debate it can be friendly it can be shitty I don't care you want to come shit at me I'm going to come shit at you but I'm going to give people respect as long as they give me respect for my beliefs it it all starts with the kids and you know and I want other Christians maybe who are teetering who are having questions who are maybe on the fence about what they believe. you know I want them to know that you know there is a good life that can happen without theism. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You can have Absolutely. a good, happy, fulfilling, morally stable, constitutionally driven, great life that has nothing to do with a higher power. That has nothing right. to do with damnation, that has nothing to do with sin, has nothing to do with anything other than you guide your life the best way you can. I'm going to do it the best way I can. And society is large. We've got red lights and green lights. It's simple. Yeah, you know, it's like you know. So, listen. In part one of our interview, mm-hmm. I made clear from my experience that I found Christendom to be a delusionary psychosis, as have a multitude of great thinkers. And you know, you can use you know when I remember you used the term Muslim, mm-hmm. and I explained that I do not use it because it means true follower of God, sure. and there is no there is no God to be a true follower of. In the same way, when you call somebody a Christian, it reinforces in their mind that you identify that there is a Christ or that there is a God, if you use the term Muslim. So I've been using Mohammedanism, which we can simplify to adherence of Islam. Mm -hmm. And I want to, you know, in the same way that there is no Satan, 
you know, people say, well, what is Satanism? Well, for the Church of Satan, Anton LaVey and everybody else, there's no Satan. No. It was just catharsis. It was just using terminology to say, we're not frightened of your threats that we're going to go burn in flames somewhere. And um, so in the same way, I so I've used that the phraseology, but I, I do want to tell you what I do know about okay. Islam. They do not threaten their children. That if they do not eat and drink the body and blood of a supposed Christ, that they have no life in them, nor does anybody else who does not eat and drink the body and blood of Jesus, they've spared, Islam has spared their children that blasphemy. And while Catholics train their children to partake in the first Holy Communion, it's a blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Where the supposed Christ deity is to be eaten, which is thereafter thereafter defecated into a toilet and drank, which is thereafter urinated into the sewer. Mm -hmm. And those of Islam or Hinduism or Judaism who do not do this are those who, quote unquote, have no life in them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Simon, as a Vengeance fan, you might recall the Vengeance Rising song among the dead mm -hmm. we're walking among the dead is what we you know is what those people believe and trust me i was in it for 10 years that's oh, yeah. exactly what they believe and so even to this day adults who eat the flesh and defecate it into the toilet and drink the blood and urinate it into the sewer as though it is a communion it is a blasphemy and what is blasphemy well that all depends on who you talk to so yeah. the republican currently mike pompeo he uh, may be running for the presidency of the United States. He was head of the CIA. He was a secretary of state here in the United States. And uh, so he has a book uh, called, um, it's called Never Give an Inch. And the so-called pastor who wrote the intro was put into prison in North Korea for committing blasphemy mm -hmm. against Kim Jong-un because mm -hmm. it was blasphemy. You see, Religious people like to claim that everybody else are blasphemers until they themselves are arrested and put into prison for the same crime they claim to have an understanding based upon their fictitious relationship, fictitious relationship with Jesus. And again, you know, I, I'm willing to read the Quran cover to cover, but I want to read it with somebody who's an authority, somebody in Iran, yeah. somebody in Afghanistan, the Boko Haram. Somebody has to say, listen, we're all it's only 600, 700 pages. You can read that in a week. Easy. Yeah. So I'm saying, listen, I need an authority to say, you know, who? OK, for instance, I read it one time. And it was obviously clear that people who attach godhood to human beings, which is what Christendom does to Jesus, they're blasphemers as far as I saw. So let me, uh, if I didn't get that right, somebody let me know. But I want to, I'll read it cover to cover within one week. I'll, I'll commit two hours a day. But the point being is whether it's, you know, whatever book the Hindus read or whoever, Hey, man, let's go through it and let's find out. But I'm telling you, the children need to be alleviated from all this nonsense. They need to be given friendships and kindness and, and mm -hmm. care and all the things that humanity has to offer without these religious bigotries being imposed upon them yeah. so that their their minds are jacked because they're like, well, if somebody's not eating the flesh and drinking the blood, well, then they have no life in them. That's That's, 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 that's sordid. It's it's anyway. Yeah, so but it's yeah, not only you know, that. It's also you know, it's it's the repression of your normal you know journey into manhood with you know being ashamed of sex. You know what I mean? Being afraid. I mean, especially with like in the church when I was growing up, like they multiple you know multiple times would have the the record burning sessions where you bring in your secular albums and the demons would come out of it. <laughs> And all that crazy nonsense, you know, back backmasking, you know what I mean? Like you can hear right. the, so the devil. It's it's such preposterous things now that as an adult <laughs> looking back, and it actually frustrates me and actually pisses me off to the point where like I fell for that. I was taught that I was groomed to right. do that. And so they right. put fear like I didn't, and this is a true story. I did not see the movie The Exorcist till I was 22 years old because I was afraid of it. And then once I finally was like at that point where I really was like, I'm done with Christianity. I don't believe this anymore. This can't harm me. I sat down and watched it and was like, that movie sucked. 
It wasn't scary, you know. Dude. But that's the what thing. I- There's all these ideology that they put on, you know. I remember being probably 13 in the youth group and them trying to cast demons out of people. I'm like, <laughs> what kind of and, and looking back at it as as an adult now, I'm like, what kind of crazy psychosis are you teaching these children that they are one possessed by the devil? And I'll tell you what have to be exercised by by the church. When I was when I was 11 or 12 and I saw that film, it scared the fuck out of me, dude. I I went to bed with my mother. I was in bed and I swore that the bed was shaking because because of what we had a mild tremor or whatever. And I it was they put that shit in your head and then it gets to your and then and then it it, it fucking roots itself into the cause of your brain. And it took me many years. I mean, even even doubting Christianity at you know an early age, I was afraid to walk away from it because I wanted to I wanted to hedge my bets. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when I finally was able to say, "I'm done. This isn't real. I don't believe this. I'm gonna walk away from it." Man, my life has been so much more fulfilled because there aren't limitations. There aren't. And you know, one one one. If I can bring a just a movie clip back to your mind that um, yeah. I thought was hilarious as hell. Uh, it's a film where it's called The Mummy, and the guy who's being attacked by the mummy has every religious chain around his neck. So yeah, he's yeah. holding up his Judaism, and then he's holding up the cross, and he's holding up a you know this and that and the other thing. <laughs> finally, <laughs> it was hilarious. He finally had one who worked, and he's like, "Listen, I'll wear all the chains. Just give me the one that works." And obviously, whichever one worked in that movie was the one that the director or the right. writer felt passionate with, you know. Oh, it was funny. So, right, let me ask you this: since, it was we were talking about, uh, since we were talking about vengeance, real quick, you know, yeah. everybody knows, you know, the split. Everybody knows what fucking happened. You know, I'm not trying to rehash and get into ancient fucking history. But let me ask you this, man: at that point when the band was splitting up. And you were still, you know, sanctuary pastor and you still wanted, you were committed to Jesus and you wanted to make music and whatnot, man. Was, were you really feeling it spiritually or was it just something that you said, all right, man, I'm making a living at this. I want to make this my career. I want to keep being a, a working musician and an artist. Was it something maybe at that point where you were like, I'm not really feeling it, but because of what I've built already this far, should I continue going? Or dude, really still in dude, it. dude, I could have walked on fucking water, dude. I could have walked. I was so deluded. I believe that Jesus existed at one point, and I'll let you. You know, this is a heavy point. Yeah, let, let's at get one point. That, I let's, was, let's, let's, I was so, I was so furious at Jesus because I was praying and praying and praying, and uh, for instance, I would do things like, uh, for instance. We got our first royalty checks, right? And I got mm-hmm. multi thousands of dollars, and all the rest of the band members got pennies because they weren't the writers on the album. Yeah. And I took those checks back to the company and I said, listen, guys, I said, let's, let's just split it. You know, everybody gets an equal amount. And they're like, Roger, you know, you're signing into the contract. You get all this money. They don't get that money. And I said, that's okay. Let me just give them this money and stuff. Yeah. And I gave them my freaking money, man. And uh, I was deluded that there was a Jesus, that there was a, and dude, at one point I was so pissed off at Jesus. And I, it was a, it was a friend of mine, uh, a lover of mine from another country. She was super hot in bed. Anyway, she <laughs> got the police to come over and stop me from killing myself because I wasn't committing suicide. I wanted a fucking audience with Jesus. And I was like, Jesus, you fucking bastard. How come I can't get, an answer how come i can't yeah. how come you're not coming down and talking to me and i need some answers about what's going on in my life right now what these people are all being you know uh you know I, I felt like those in the bible they say there are those who are under the altar telling their deity hey when are you gonna go take revenge on these pieces mm-hmm. of living shit because you know and, and the deities are, eh, we'll get to it we'll take revenge on them you know they're they're under the altar and 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 i had a gun dude and I wasn't, it wasn't ending my life. It was getting an audience with the deity. Yeah. And fortunately, the Los Angeles Police Department saved my life. You yeah. know, there were a bunch of them. They broke into my apartment. And <laughs> dude, I, I staved them off, dude. I was like, I'm going to shoot through the walls. <laughs> I, I made them throw out, I made them throw out their police badge so that I could see it. 
I was like, anybody could have broken into my house. I don't know who you are. Yep. And uh, but fortunately, well, especially never... LAPD back then, man. Those <laughs> are the most fucking corrupt. Rafael, Rafael Perez yep. and, the, and the, fucking uh, 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 what's his uh, 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 chief police at the time. I can't remember his name. Hey, and let's put it this way: like we went to a Slayer concert one time, right? We were handing out pamphlets for for to come to Sanctuary. Yeah, and uh, all these police came down the street. And they were just bashing everybody. George Ochoa was there. Yep. I was there. And uh, I told George, I said, dude, let's get out of here. Yep. He goes, no, man, we're here for, you know, we're just handing out pamphlets. <laughs> they the don't give a shit. Said, dude. So I head for the hills. And then certainly enough, I look back and they came up on George. And they just start beating George. So we had a meeting with them later. And they said, well, what happened? I said, well, they came up and just start beating people indiscriminately for no good reason. Yep. And I don't think anything became of it, but damn, that was happening in what was in Los Angeles. So, yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah, but, kids today yeah. about, you know, metal shows and punk rock shows and whatnot, they don't know what it's like. <laughs> you know, it's it's a it's a it's an unsanctioned event, and man. LAPD would show up, dude, and they would not only kick your ass, they'd take your money. You know what I mean? And well, all I know is they jacked the up George. Curve, like, and I, I, I got, I got cut. I went over a fence and I sliced my arm because I was trying to get away. And it was a Slayer concert, and it was like, you know, we were just telling people, "Hey, come to church, man." Yeah. You know, and they, they didn't give a shit. It was, it was, it was, it was a nightmare, man. I don't know. I apparently things have changed since then. I hope. I, I well, you the know, only reason I, mean, I live down changed. by the beach now. I live down by the beach, yeah. and I've been this for. Hollywood has been so gentrified. I mean, we were just there in uh in January for my daughter's 21st. Came out, you know, because we go we go back to you know, from Ventura. We go home and you know, we went down to Hollywood that day to shop, Melrose, and then down to the Japanese market downtown. And like yeah, man, when I used to work shows at the Whiskey and the Roxy and the the Troubadour, when I was oh, you worked people. at the Whiskey and the Roxy and Troubadour? Yeah, I um, <laughs> I worked at the Ventura Concert Theater, and whenever there weren't shows that shit going on, we would get outsourced to other places if we wanted it. Like, wow. I, dude, I did Body Count one time. I will say one of the craziest shows <laughs> I ever worked was Pantera. There with goes White the Zombie, neighborhood. What's you that? Know, uh, was Pantera White Zombie mm. uh, got stabbed at Slayer one time? Uh, at, uh, the Ventura Stabbing Theater. Slayer. Yeah, did a did a one time at Su uh, at the Ventura Theater. Suicidal was playing. <laughs> yeah. Pantera. Pantera. <laughs> exactly. Or or you know, you know, stripper bags full of money. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, um, the, down in the pit, my manager told me like, "Yo, man, like suicidal's here. Their crew's here. If they're down on the floor, don't fuck with them." And I'm I always work pit security because I like doing that shit, you know. And so um, I'm standing there and like, dude, there's like 13, 14, 15 year old punk rock kids in the pit. And these, you know, <laughs> SA dudes are fucking with them and slapping them. And I got tired of that shit, dude. I walked over, was like, leave the kids alone. Incidents happen. I knock out two of them, I'm like, pop, pop, throw some dudes out. So I'm leaving at the end of the night. And my manager's like, yo, man, you need to go out the back way. And I'm like, why? He's like, those motherfuckers are outside looking for you. So I peek out the window and there's like 12 SAs fucking just waiting on their low riders. So I'm like, all right, so I had to sneak out the back, go around the block to the park. Damn. And, you know, hey, you know what, man? That that's how life is. But you know, I mean, I mean, that's the thing. Kids today, man, they're like, oh man, like we have to wear X's. And like, fuck, man. I used to go to shows that like if you fucked up, you were gonna get fucking handled. You know what I mean? You were gonna mm. get the shit beat out of you. You know. <laughs> well, let wow. me ask you this then. On the on on keep going with this with with you know. I think people don't realize the magnitude of what you went through as a person, not only, you know, as your personal life, your spiritual life, your professional life, you know what I mean? You know, being, I mean, and, and, and I'm going to say it because my wife is amazing. Like she, I was in bands for years. I was never home playing shows at practice, you know, here and there doing things. And my wife has always been super, we've been married almost 24 years now. She's always been super supportive and, and, she she's my rock and i'm not saying that in like the cliche man way but like my wife kicks ass man she she she's always had my back she lets me do what i need to do not only as a man but as a person but i think when people criticize you and the the posts i've been seeing it really pisses me off because people don't <laughs> know what you went through you know what well, I mean? here's the thing bro 
I've been living in paradise for decades, man. I mean, you know, after religion, uh, and I've just had wonderful women, man, who just have been the greatest thing in my life. And the woman I'm with now, we've been going on, going on 20 years. And the thing about it is, it's like, you know, I've lived in paradise and I'm still living. I'm the next, I, you know, I eventually got into the housing market, became a real estate agent. And that's what I've been doing for 30 years. And um, I've been having a great time. So, you know, whatever people might perceive, oh, it must have been a bummer. I, no, I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, when Jesus didn't come down and fucking speak to me and I was going to blow my fucking head off so that he could, um, that was a moment that I had a true awakening where I was like, holy fuck, man. People are killing themselves thinking that they're going to go see a God, thinking yes. that they're going to be with the deity, thinking, and it's all bullshit. And I was yeah. like, don't kill you. There's no reason. There's too much good things to live for. And 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 even like little kids, they're out here playing I'll, over here. I hear them every day. And I'm like, these poor kids, they need people like me. And people like you, Simon, and people like those who are watching this video, to, to be there for them so we can give some reason and some meaning that yep. makes sense to the fun and the treasures and the joy of life. And um and not the not fear. To, yeah, and, yeah not the and, fear. And, the, and the bigotry and the separation, yep. not to hate other kids because you know they because they don't eat the flesh and drink the blood, and they're you know, they have no life in them, and, and we're walking among the dead again, those. All those Vengeance Rising songs were all Bible studies. But they were still great songs. They were still great <laughs> songs. <laughs> hey, I'm going to write, better. Hold on, I'm gonna write some better songs, man. I will I'm going to write this, some better songs. The one album, I'm just going to say it straight up, man. The one album I thought fucking sucked was Once Dead. That is my least favorite record. Because you know okay. what? Because, and this is why. <laughs> and I see this now with the guys going on to Die Happy. I don't like Southern Rock. I don't like the blues. You know what I mean? I appreciate it for what it is. It's not my thing. Mm. Once Dead had more of a kind of a, like, like Vengeance, was the first album was balls out heavy. Uh, uh, Destruction Comes, very cool. Re released is my second favorite record. Once Dead was just, it had a lot of bluesy kind of like rock and roll stuff that I wasn't into. Like, I wanted more extreme. You know, like I said, uh, I will say this to one guy that that actually commented this when we were talking about Deicide. He's like, well, if you know your facts, Deicide didn't come out till this time. Well, asshole, if you know actually anything about Glenn Benton, he had the band Amon that came out in 1987. And it was the same exact songs and lineup that the first Deicide record came out with. So go fuck yourself. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know but you know once dead wasn't my thing but by that time you know we already had like mortifications first record which is legitimate grindcore which is my thing i like grindcore and death metal the most you know what i mean mm -hmm. so um I'm, yeah i don't know where i was going with that but i'm just saying like you're out with kick ass i love vengeance but um yeah once dead was not my cup of tea mm -hmm. every other record fuck yeah <laughs> and listen, bro, I will be now that you've introduced me to the uh, YouTube, the whole thing. Here's the thing. Like I told you in session one, I wanted to do this, but I just, you know, now I just never got around to it. But now that I, that I all these tools are available. So I'll put together some cool. If you yeah. if anybody is seeing the before the time video, you know, the Great quality video. of my work, you no, know, the, the fact that I real quick. Let me ask you this. How did you guys get on that hard and heavy video? That yeah, it was it was simply the fact that, you know, I in in whatever I was doing, I was trying to, you know, really put some good hard work into it. Uh, again, for the before the time video, it was a forty thousand dollar video. It took 12 hours to shoot. We clipped it down to three and a half minutes. It's a great song. Video. I was like, hey, it is. It's a great I mean, video. You know, so that's the type of videos I want to put together for YouTube for all the new people who are being introduced back to what we were doing then. And now let's do it and make a statement. Yeah. Let's 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 help people love each other in the way yeah. that, you know, again, you know, there are people who are complete and total, utter assholes. I'll tell you what, you know, dealing in the medical the field where I have to deal with these some of these nurses and some of these uh people who answer the phones at some of these doctors' offices, I'm like, 
how did they get their jobs? They're horrible. They're rotten people. So don't get me wrong. There are going to be people you're, you're going to think in your life, these people are rotten people. They don't deserve care. They don't deserve love. And you're like, yeah, you're probably right. You know, <laughs> so the point is that as many people as you can, you know, give them the benefit of that, hopefully help them out. But if they're like talking shit to you all day long, like yep. some of these people who answer the phones in my doctor's offices, I'm oh, like, yeah. are you kidding me? They're like, it's like they just they came out of some, you know, career college and they really just wanted a paycheck. They're right. not caring about the patients. And anyway, long and short of it. Well, I hear but, you. Um, well, you know, so you real quick, let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, Back then, like you're talking about LAPD, with everything on your plate, man, you know what I mean? Being in the band, being being the preacher, being a husband, being a friend, being a writer, a musician. At what point did all of that boil up, you know, when, you, when you're just like, man, just, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't live this false life and keep, keep you know, making the youth think these bullshit ide ideology when I'm just. Well, here. Yeah, and here was the thing, bro. When your sex life is hot, everything else falls in line. So even though, uh, you know, I've been married for like, my wife and I were banging for a year and a half before we got married. We were banging for years after that, five, six, seven years. And after that, the girls just got hotter. They wanted to have, they were better. I mean, so well, I was- Well, let me say this. Let me say this real quick. I think Christians think that just because you're a Christian band, you're not getting the groupies. You're not getting the girls. Ah. You're not getting the pussy. You know what I mean? You're not getting Dude. the that are star fuckers. That, that, you I, know. And whether they claim they're Christians or not, you know what I mean? I will say this. Um, Mark Solomon from The Crucified, the singer, wrote a book. And I read it, and it's a fantastic book. The one thing that gave me, I, I, I applaud him for this. And I wanna, I'd love to interview him. So, Mark, if you ever see this, I want to talk to you was his things were never drugs. It wasn't booze. It was girls. You know what I mean? He frequently would talk about in this book about, man, he would sleep with a lot of girls because they were just as interested in fucking as he was. You know what I mean? Well, here's the, here's the thing. There's no bro. sin in that. It's called growing up. It's called finding what you well, like. Here's, here's, here's something else about it, bro. And I mean, women can have sex with any guy they want, but if any they get time. out man of god they want that dick and my fans mothers mm -hmm. they were young you know they were having kids when they're anywhere from 15 to 25 mm -hmm. and their fan they were their their kids became my fans and i don't know why bro but they wanted to have sex with me those mothers and they did <laughs> it was hot because, so because so Roger, they could, they're star fuckers. Go back man. to their so kid and be like, oh, you know, Junior, you know, yeah. this Roger guy, he's a wonderful, he's such a wonderful guy. And I'm like, damn, I'm glad those kids never knew about it. Because, I mean, I'm like, it, it had nothing to do with them. Yeah. It just had to do with their hot mom. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing, you know, I mean, this was about probably 15 oh. years ago. Striper was here and they played a local club. I hadn't seen Striper since I was like 11. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go. And it was, it was completely funny. I ran into a bunch of like, you know, ex Christian friends of mine were like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You know, kind of a secret shame that we like Striper. And dude, there's girls, you know, flashing their tits on the front. I'm just like, man, the, you know, like that's my whole thing. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say it to the Christian music audience out there whatnot there is no christian music it's just music you know what i mean and <laughs> the girls are going to be going to be horny for the guys in the band just as much as as motley crew had their groupies you know what right. I mean? so yeah. i mean you know stop putting these people on a fucking pedestal because they're just people and i guarantee you 90 percent of those assholes that you're listening to probably don't fucking really believe it they're getting fucking paid for it you know, I don't know about that because I mean, when I was into it, we like I said, I could have walked on water, bro. I mean, yeah, but we, you know what? You, we, you, you walked away from it, and you were young when you've been in the. No, the, the reason though that I walked away was it because when I began investigating so-called healings and so-called speaking in tongues, it was fraud. It was definite. There were no healings. There, there were no, no. people speaking in tongues, and so you know that's what the issue was. It wasn't that. Um, 
you know, I walked away from it uh, for any, you know, other reason than the fact that it was that it was fraud. And, yeah. and then I started reading all the other books. Like I said, I read the Quran, I read the Bahavika Gita, I read the, uh, you know, all, and and it just all of it reeked as games of deception. It was just G O D games of deception. Yeah. And and then looking at like Richard Dawkins, you know, video series, The God yeah. Delusion. He's like, listen, here, you know, these kids need to be elevated from this frame of reference mm-hmm. and taken to a better place so they can have a better future. And that's what I'm looking forward to doing over the next 20, 30 years yeah. of my life and uh, having this series part of. So all of you listening to this, come on, give me a call. Give me your questions. Let me know about your life. Let's, yeah. let's interchange. And, and uh, you know, Simon and I will be doing, uh, you know, another 10, 15 you know, interview sessions and uh, let's make this something. Let's, let's do something with it. Well, that's, that's what I want to say to the people watching, you know, if you have enough balls to post a comment, have enough balls to have a phone call. (laughs) You You know know what? what? And that's the other thing on like these people who are posting some of the comments, like Roger, you have no charisma. And like, I've been with the woman for 20 years. Are you, can you really realize <laughs> how much man, charisma like, that takes? I mean, I'm like, I'm like, dude, I, I'm a cancer patient over two years now. I'm, I'm beating it. I mean, I'm going to live another 20 years. My doctor tells me I'm, I'm things are going well. I've, I've, I've been, you know, in bed for over half a year. Yeah. I may not be as chipper as you might like, but I'll get back to that. <laughs> Damn. Not even that, man. Like back in the day, like, and like I said, you know, growing up out there, man, I've met a ninety percent of the of of the, the 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 Christian artists that most people have only listened to. I've interacted with them. I've talked with them. You were always the most charismatic because you had you had energy, man. You were like boom, boom, boom. You always went full tail, full tail, a thousand percent. So like, you have no charisma. Like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> w, whatever fuck your name is. You know, Dude, boom, do you right know? There, Rick W. I don't give a fuck about you. Here's the thing, and this is what I want Christians to know. If you think like, like, no, I'm a nice guy, man, but like, I'm I'm a legit fucking dude that's gonna say some shit. And if you don't like <laughs> it, don't watch my fucking show. Don't subscribe. Don't be on it because if you're not here to talk about truth and tell me the truth about your life, whether I disagree with it or not, then I'm not in, interested in fluff. I want to get to the real fucking reasons of why you people still believe this shit, you know? And, you know, just just on the energy side of the things, dude, not only was I pounding coffee, I mean, pot after pot every single day, but I was in with uh, this one Pentecostal uh, life, the uh, the people who ruled, uh, run Life Bible College and what have you, they had a doctor and he would give me speed. He would give me legal speed. I forget what it was called, but it was tablets you would take. So between that and the coffee and the speed, I was like, holy shit. That's so when you saw me uh, all jazzed up, I was probably gacked out of my mind. All right. I'm going to ask you one quick question. We'll make it short and then I'll let you get some rest. All right, man. I'm going to let some people know how this kind of started. Um, I've been wanting to do this series for a while. And how it started was with Bill Rocks of Rocks Records. He started uh, reintroducing the vinyls for uh, 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 Destruction Comes and Re- Released Upon the Earth. And those are the two of the vinyls I didn't have, which if people, you know, I'm going to say, I've said it before, I'm a huge vinyl collector. I have over 800 LPs. I wow. collect vinyl. That's my thing. I love vinyl. Always have. And so I reached out to Bill and I was like, hey, man, I see that you were releasing these two Vengeance Risings. Do you know how I can get hold of Roger? because I want to have a conversation with him. And his response was, I don't know. So long story short, I was able to track down Roger and uh, somebody gave me my phone number. We called and we talked and whatnot, you know, but you know, my problem is, is that whether you're Christian or not, you should be paid for your labor. You should be paid for your product. And you had not been paid in quite a long time. So I will say, hopefully I'm a catalyst to where you're, whether you agree with the ideology or not, you're getting paid for what the fuck you put out because that was well, here's, a, here's the thing, dude. I told him and I asked him, quit, just quit selling it. Yeah. But they're still selling. I'm well, still getting Adele, pennies, dude. royalty yeah. checks. And the thing about it is, I'm like, well, who's buying these albums and give them my phone number so I can tell them, hey, that, that's bullshit, man. But they won't do that. They won't yeah. let me know their stores they're selling them at. They won't tell me who's buying them. 
and they wanted to charge me 40 grand to buy out the catalog. I'm yep. like, you're sending me checks for pennies. Why the hell would I pay you 40 grand to do something you should morally do yep. in the first place? Well, I, I will mean, say that is Mesheimer music or whatever. Yeah. These people are full of shit. Well, that, that's the thing is that it's Bill Rocks from Rocks Records, who's been licensing all the, all the you know, he's done Deliverance and Mortification and, and all these other bands and whatnot. And, you know, whether Bill likes it or not, I've reached out to him. I want to have a conversation with him about, about the business aspect of these things. But he, yeah, and that's the thing I was going to say is that, you know, at that point in time, when Adele Meisenheimer, who owns MDL Records, who is licensed, who owns the Vengeance Rising catalog, has uh, transparent it over to Bill and then put it out. And then, yeah, she's like, well, you give me 40 grand and I won't sell it anymore. It's like, pardon. They're just immoral. They're just immoral. They want kids to. They want kids to eat the communion and yeah. all this shit. And I'm like, so the Christians want to make money off of it so they can go to fucking Paris and 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 fucking jerk off on the Mona Lisa. That's and here's the thing, be. bro. I'm a real estate agent. You know, the minimum house I'm selling these days is half a million dollars. I get a fourteen thousand dollar paycheck on that. And my Beverly Hills office, dude. As soon as I get out of this bed, I'm going to be doing multi million dollar properties. I mean. This idea that they're, you know, it's they're just they're immoral. Mm -hmm. I don't need their fucking money. It's not about like, the money. It's not about the money for me. Like, and that's the thing is, like, even when we were talking and you were offering me, like, hey man, I'll give you this or this. I never wanted anything from you. What I want from you is is truth. What I want from people is truth. I want experiences. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck about money. I own my own business, man, dude. I make serious fucking money. Boom. Big fucking tattooed guy. I make more money than most motherfuckers make in a month. In a day. <laughs> yeah, I own my Ooh. own fucking business. My Ooh. house is paid off. I have no debt to anyone. I make right. serious fucking money. You know, that works. and that's the thing. I don't care about money. I mean, I do care about money, but uh, <laughs> when, and that's the thing is like, I want, I want other people when I reach out to them to do this show, I'm not about, getting glory or anything. I want to hear your fucking story. I want to hear your path. I want to hear what led you to either keep or deny this, this so-called religion, you know, entanglement that you have going on because, you know, and again, it was all about the falsified so-called yeah. healings and speaking in tongues. And it went from there down the road and it kept going and kept going. And, and it was just, it was that simple. And yeah. during the time I had so many women who loved me and I'm like, well, this is like, I'm living like the life of Solomon. Holy <laughs> shit. You know, I was like, I was, I'm cool with this. You well, know, and, so and, you know, and you know, just as much as I know, Roger, if we really went down and, and talk story by story, I, and I will say this to everybody watching, you go look up the, 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 the nine commandments of the satanic Bible and then look and then challenge that against the Ten Commandments. You tell me which one is more moral. Anytime. <laughs> any fucking time. You know what I mean? I will fight and debate all you cocksuckers on that. Because you know what? The first rule of, of the Satanic Bible, which everyone's so afraid of, which is an atheist fucking organization, is do no harm. Do no harm. That works. That's not what the Ten Commandments say. <laughs> <you know? laughs> All right, bro. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I again, bro. Thank you so much for part two. We'll get to part three in, uh, in the next month or so. Yeah. And um, everybody, send, give me a call. Send Please, me a question. Let's talk, man. Let's, let's build some friendships and some relationships here. Yeah, and, and here's um, the thing, Roger. I, let's, I don't want to hear bullshit from people, man. Let's hear some real fucking questions. Call. Call this man. He's making himself fucking accessible to you. All you pussies for all these years talk shit about how Roger's not accessible. He is giving you the best fucking opportunity of your life right now. You want to call and talk to Roger? Give him a fucking message. Talk some truth. Talk some shit. I don't give a fuck. Let's make some real conversation. Let's make some real fucking headway in life. Sounds cool, bro. My brother, I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you. All right, we'll talk next time, man. You, when you're feeling uh, up to it next time, you let me know. We'll do part fucking three. You got it, bro. All right, brother.